Welcome to Review the Light. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Thrunite TI-3. Um, but really quick, if you haven't yet, uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link right up here. And uh, also you can uh, follow my Facebook page uh, by this link right up here. Um, so, uh, Thrunite TI-3 is Thrunite's uh, upgrade to their previous uh, little one AAA light, uh, the TI-2. Um, it runs off a single AAA battery, uh, uses a uh, Cree XPG-2 emitter, um, and uh, really quick we'll take a look inside here. So inside of this um, kind of fun packaging you see it's got this, uh, comes in this metallic box with a uh, small plastic window so you can see the light uh, through it. So kind of a fun little display box. Um, underneath the light in here you have the user manual. It's got the specifications and instructions uh, for operation, so it's a pretty simple light. Um, and also the accessories here, you've got a spare O-ring along with a little lobster claw uh, keychain attachment kind of thing, which um, it has a little, if you can see in there, a uh, little kind of triangular clip that you can use, or it's a circular one if you prefer um, to clip the lobster claw little keychain thing to the light um, right here at the tail. You can see there's a small hole in the tail ring there. And you just use a pair of pliers to clip on the, the ring. And uh, it is designed with the kind of thing so it can stick at the uh, keychain attachment, can stick out the side so the light will still be able to do a tail stand even if that's attached. Um, so we'll put these aside for now. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the TI-3 is an upgrade to Thrunite's TI-2. Now, the uh, previous light, the TI-2, um, only had two modes. The uh, TI-3 has actually four. It has three regular brightness modes and a strobe mode, which we'll show you later. And the, the maximum output here is 120 lumens, and uh, the minimum output, they say, is 0 0.04 lumens. So I'll measure those later, and I'll put a full link um, to the, uh, full, uh, excuse me, a link to the full review in the description. You can check out what my measurements ended up being uh, if you're interested. So, uh, taking a look, you can see the XPG-2 emitter in there. Um, XPG-2 is an upgrade to the old XPG emitters. Uh, more efficient uh, for the same uh, energy input. You get more light output and less heat. Um, the XPG-2 XPG uh, family um, is uh, utilized in smaller lights because it is a, a smaller uh, die, even though it doesn't have quite the efficiency of an XML and the, quite the sheer output, um, the light is a little bit more focused uh, in a small package. Um, so you can still get a, a little bit better throw than um, a completely floody XML emitter would give you. Uh, you can see it's got a, a slight texture. And I'll just try and see if my camera will focus up close. You can see a little bit of texture in the uh, reflector there. Helps smooth out the beam a little bit. Um, at the cost of a little bit of throw, but with a light like this, throw isn't your main uh, concern. So you can see it's got a uh, knurling on the head and on the body here, and that's actually a decent grip um, for such a small light. So that's good uh, because the light is controlled by twisting of the head, and I'll get into that in a minute. You can see the uh, Thrunite label there, um, the model name TI-3 on the other side of the head. It's only printing on the light. Uh, it comes with this uh, small detachable clip. So. It takes a decent amount of force to get it off. It's not likely that it'll come off by accident, um, but you can uh, attach the clip in either direction. So um, it's a, a nice feature. And then the uh, tail, as I mentioned, is flat here uh, with the lanyard or keychain hole design so that you can have the keychain attachment in there without um, losing your tail stand ability. So taking a look on the inside, you can see the uh, bottom of the circuit board there and just a flat portion uh, to make contact uh, with the battery terminal. It uses one AAA battery like I mentioned um, and down there you can't see really well because uh, I can't get enough light down there but uh, there is a spring at the rear end of the battery tube so that's to make a uh, connection with the negative battery terminal. You can see I'm pushing on it and there's a spring there. So, a uh, pretty simple little light. We'll take a look at its uh, operation. So, to turn the light on, you'll normally keep the head just slightly loose. Um, and to turn the light on, you just uh, tighten it fully. So there we are on, and that's, uh, this would be the lowest mode. The fire, the, uh, they call it the firefly. And actually, it's um, my lighting is bright enough that you can't even see the beam on that. So we'll turn this down for a second. There we go. Um, so here you can see the firefly mode, and you can see that's uh, that's pretty dim. 
and they say that's about 0.04 lumens. I believe that. That's pretty dim. Um, so now, normally, like I said, you'll, you'll have the head slightly loosened. And uh, there's, it takes enough turns. Here, I'll count the turns that it takes. It takes quite a few turns to fully take it on and off. So in the past, other keychain lights with heads that you have to keep slightly loose and have the twist to turn on feature, there's been problems with the lights losing their heads. Um, so with the TI-3, let's uh, count how many full revolutions it takes here. Um, We've got one, two, three, four, and then almost five revolutions before uh, the light turns on. So about four and three quarters, four and a half is about where you'll keep it to be off. Um, so that's uh, and the the threads are pretty firm here. Um, and actually, the uh, the threads on this light are some of the smoothest that I've ever had on such a small little AAA light. Um, very easy to get the head on and off for battery changes, but uh, good resistance so that it's not going to come off on accident. So I'm pretty confident that the head on the TI-3 isn't going to fall off if you uh, carry it on your keychain, which is pretty nice. Um, so anyway, uh, I'll hit the light back off here. The first mode, when you first turn it on, is the Firefly mode, the lowest output. Um, so to switch to the next output, you're going to turn it off and then back on again within two seconds. So this is its low mode. I uh, forget, I think it's, they say it's about 12 lumens. Um, and then to get to the next mode, you turn it off and back on again, again within two seconds. And this is the 120 lumen mode. Um, so you can rotate through the modes in that way. Um, you turn the light on. It has a, an interesting mode memory. So if you turn the light off and back on within two seconds, then it cycles to the next mode, um, as you can see. But if you wait more than two seconds, if you wait between two and seven, ten seconds and you turn the light back on, as I just did, it comes back on in the mode you, you used last. Um, however, if you wait more than ten seconds, and I'll count really quick, we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you turn the light back on, it comes, it uh, defaults back to the Firefly. So if you haven't used the light for more than 10 seconds, it's going to go back to the Firefly, um, which is an interesting choice. Um, I can see the reasoning for that, uh, so that you have a reasonable amount, like when you pick up the light after not using it for a while, you know what it's going to do, and it's not going to blind you or surprise you. Um, but that's uh, definitely something to be aware of. Um, so again, if you turn the light off and back on within two seconds, it cycles to the next mode. Uh, if you wait more than two but less than 10 seconds, it comes back on what you use last. And if you wait more than 10 seconds, then it uh, defaults back to the Firefly. So we go to the, one of the lower modes so you can see the beam pattern better. So here's the low mode and you can see it's got a uh, pretty uh, good hot spot in the middle, um, but it, it uh, fades out smoothly into the spill region and then even the spill region just kind of fades off into the edge of the beam. Um, so very smooth beam. I don't see any uh, real beam artifacts which is nice um, especially in such a small light. Beam artifacts are pretty common uh, so I appreciate that. So um, that's the, the general uh, construction and the operation of the Thrunite TI-3 um, and if you will uh, stick around for just a second we will take it outside and uh, see how it does in the dark. And, uh, sorry, really quickly before we take it outside, um, I forgot one extra feature uh, that I wanted to mention, um, and that's the strobe mode. So I already showed you the uh, firefly, the low, and the high. Um, to get to the strobe mode, you basically turn it on and off rapidly six times. So uh, I'll go through it. There we go. Um, so this is a strobe mode. That's uh, on and off about six times. I didn't, uh, didn't count there, but that should be about right, um, according to the manual. Uh, also, I uh, have the uh, lobster claw attachment here installed. So you can see that um, this little triangle-shaped one was open uh, when I in the package, and I just slipped it in there and closed it with a pair of pliers um, and put on this ring with a little uh, split ring attaches the triangle part to the little uh, chain part. Um, so and now we'll take it outside and give it a shot in the dark. Hello and welcome back to Review the Light. Uh, here we've got the new Thrunite uh, TI-3 here in the backyard. Uh, we're going to give it a shot in the dark so um, I'll just go ahead and fire it up. So here is the Firefly mode. Um, as you can see uh, it's uh, pretty dim so Actually, it's shining at the camera, and you can see uh, there it is, the firefly mode. So, even directly at the camera, it's not extremely bright. Um, and I'll, I'll shine it on my hand here just so you have an idea. Uh, 
this is the uh, Firefly mode. Um, so then if you turn it off and then back on again uh, in a time between 2 and 10 seconds it stays in the Firefly. If you turn it off and then back on in uh, less than 2 seconds it goes into low mode. So here's low mode. You can see uh, now we're getting some visibility at a medium range here. Um, and uh, the, the Nikkor, or I'm sorry, excuse me, through night uh, claims this to be about 12 lumens. I've measured it to be right around 9 or 10, um, so that's uh, pretty accurate. Um, and it's plenty for walking around uh, a dark uh, yard or just uh, kind of medium range outdoor things. Um, you can tell the uh, beam has a, a fairly wide hot spot here. Um, smooth transition out into some flood. Now you can't see it too well in the video, but there's actually uh, a good deal amount of uh, flood. So I've got kind of the edge of the beam on the, the left window of those two that you see if I have it out here. So it gives you kind of an idea of the, the width of the beam. And uh, you'll see that better even on high mode. Um, so I'll go ahead and notch it up to high. So here you go. You can see the good smooth uh, hot spot in the middle. The smooth transition out into the flood and uh, to my eyes the transition between the hot spot and the flood is less defined than it is even on the video um, so uh, on the video you can make out the hot spot really well to my eyes you can still make out the hot spot but it, it doesn't seem so pronounced um, so a little bit more of a, a flood light so you can see there the the edge of the beam so it's a pretty wide angle beam due to such a small uh, head and reflector assembly um, so I'll run through those modes one more time for you we've got the little firefly the low and the medium and the high, excuse me. And uh, just we'll see if you maybe if I point the firefly at the ground, you'll be able to see it a little better here. We'll give this a shot. So the firefly, nope, no go, no, no go. And then the low and then the high. And with the high mode, we'll show you a little bit more around the yard here. So uh, the gate, and then you can a little bit make out. This uh, closer tree you can make out pretty well. Now I have a farther tree um, back the other side of the garage that you can't really see on the camera, but I can see it uh, with my eyes. Um, and pretty much well enough, I could make out if there was something moving in the tree uh, dimly. I could not well enough to identify things too well at that range. Um, but uh, there's that. So then uh, we'll also demonstrate the strobe mode really quick. There it is. You can see the fast strobe. Alright, so this has been the uh, Thrunite uh, TI3 keychain light. Uh, very impressive output, 120 lumens here on max uh, from the uh, such a small AAA light. Um, enough to light up a, quite a sizable area outdoors when you need it. Um, so, uh, again, if you haven't yet uh, subscribed to my channel, go ahead and uh, Hit the YouTube subscribe link right up here. Um, and also don't forget to uh, follow my uh, Facebook page right up there. So, uh, thanks. Have a good night.